Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Meet. I'm simply going to go over to the waffle right here and I'm going to click on I'm going to go to Google Meet. Now Google Meet is a lot like Google Hangout. It's think of it as like a newer more updated version of Google Hangout and I'm using my school account to log in because that's the correct account and I click on Google Meet. And the first thing is going to ask me do I want to join or start a meeting. Now I'm going to start a meeting, so I'm going to click on this green button right here. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it test meeting. And I click continue. And now this screen comes up and you would think from this that I'm already in a meeting, but we're not quite there yet because the link we want, you're going to have to get by going by clicking on the join now button. When we click on that button, it'll actually physically put me into where the meeting's going to be. So I click on the Join Now button, and all of a sudden this room pops up, and it gives me this important information right here, which is the link that everyone will need to get to the meeting. Now, if you don't have a computer, you can dial that number right there and then type in that pin and get to the same meeting. As long as a group of people click on that same link at about the same time so they can physically all be in front of their computers, they can have a meeting together. You'd, you'd obviously have to email people and tell them a meeting time or put a calendar invite with the link in and give them a meeting time. Now, if you cut and paste this link into an email or a calendar invite, people could simply click onto the link the way it is, or if they wanted to, they could cut and paste into a browser. And if that didn't work, they could simply type in the phone number and type in the pin. Now, that's how you would start a meeting, and obviously you'd have to convince everybody to show up at the same time. But once the meeting starts, sometimes there are mild technical issues that people deal with that are usually very fixable. So the first things that happen is sometimes the audio or video doesn't work the way you expected it to work. So the best thing that you can do is simply go over to the little snowman over here, the three little dots, it says more options, and I'm going to click on it. And this window pops up, and I can click on settings. Now under this, it it shows the options I have for a microphone, and I have more than one option here. It's on the correct option because I've checked it before. But if it wasn't, I could simply try the other options and see if they work. Now for the speaker, same thing. It gives me multiple options. I can click this button to test the speaker, and I'll hear a ringing sound. You won't, but you can find out by that if your speakers are working correctly. Now the video is right here, and you can see me in the video right there in the corner. And it shows the camera. Now, the only option I have here is the webcam that I have on my laptop. Now, if I had another webcam that I plugged in, obviously I could have more choices. Most people are going to just have one. But if it's not working, you can check to see if it's somehow defaulting to a different choice. Then the other choices are resolution. Now, 360 is great to use and it works fine, but it's I tend to use something like that when I have bandwidth issues. Now, I happen to be on a computer that's very good bandwidth. So I can type on 720 and I can have a little bit clearer picture and I'm gonna click on 720. And that'll give me a little bit clearer picture. Now, if you had bandwidth issues, you can go with a lower number, but both will work just fine. And I'm gonna click done. So now we've done those things, our audio and video is working. There's a couple of things I wanna point out. There's a microphone here where you can mute yourself. And if people can't hear you, one of the places you check to see if it's accidentally muted. Over here is the camera, and I could turn the camera off, and there's reasons to do that. Somebody, something might be going on here, and I might not want people to see it, um, so I might want to mute my microphone, but I also might want to turn up the video. So I'll, I'll click that on for a second. And now you see a picture of me, and you see that movement to show that I'm talking. So people do this for various reasons. Um, you know, it could be you're having a bad hair day, or it could be that your bandwidth is slow and it looks awkward. It could be any number of reasons, but you can turn it on and off. And obviously, if I was done with the call, I could click that to hang up. But before we get to that point, I want to show a couple more features. The first thing is right here, you can click on this to see who's actually in the meeting, to see if people have shown up or if you've lost people. That's very important. And here you can see that I'm talking. Oftentimes, you can click on people's pictures and mute it, depending on how this is configured on the back end. So if somebody's away from their computer and there's some sort of background noise, you could try that feature. There's also chat because if you have 10 people in a room, you can't really have side conversations you might have in a conference room. So people could type in and chat something here. People sometimes cut and paste links, or if they don't want to interrupt the speaker, they, they, they have side conversations here. So this is a good way to communicate as well. 
if you can have a chat going on at the same time and you can have both up, that certainly can help facilitate a conversation. So those are the main features that you have to worry about. Um, there are a few others. I mean, you can turn on closed captions. Most people probably won't need that, but it's there if for some reason people are having difficulty following what's going on or have some sort of hearing difficulty, the option is there. Um, and there are a few other settings in here, like I can turn off closed caption or I could go to full screen, um, things like that. So I'm gonna turn off my closed caption. This is John L. Sullivan, thank you.